Namaskar. How does science misinformation work? We have now a classic case of science disinformation and how it can be done in a, in a coordinated, organized manner by those in power. Let us have a look at this to understand you know, how this whole thing is weaved together you know, to, to uh, pull wool over our eyes, so to speak. This story begins in Feb February 2020, February last year, when an article was published in the Lancet of the United Kingdom. It is among the world's oldest and best known uh, general medical journals. And the title of that article, uh, which was actually a letter written by 27 scientists and academicians, the title was Statement in Support of the Scientists and Medical Professionals of China Combating COVID-19. And while making a statement in that letter, uh, supporting their friends in China, the 27 scientists and academicians also said their main point that we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 leaked from a lab uh, and that it does not have a natural origin. So this was the real purpose of that letter, uh, though it was titled uh, support to our, our, our doctor, physician friends in China. The real purpose was to nip in the bud any investigation, any research, any finding, any opinion, questioning what would be a most natural question, isn't it, for all of us, for the whole world? Where did this damn virus come from? How did it jump? from the animal kingdom to the human kingdom. Uh, biology has, has studied all this and, and it doesn't have an answer to this question yet with regard to COVID-19. And what was the result of this article being published in a famous journal like the Lancet? What happened was physicians, scientists, researchers, even journalists were effectively silenced. Because here were 27 scientists who had written and published a letter in a famous prestigious uh, publication. So anyone who raised questions anymore about the source of this virus would be called a conspiracy theorist. And that danger was felt by all. So despite the fact that many people, many scientists, physicians, uh, researchers, journalists had this question in the back of their mind. This event of February 2020, very early in the in the in the in the story of COVID-19, that event effectively ended the debate about the true origins of the novel coronavirus. Real science and scientific work had come to a halt. Now, the lead actor in this saga, one of the lead actors, is Dr. Peter Daszak. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a British zoologist. He was co-author and prime initiator of the letter published in Lancet, along with 26 other experts. Dr. Dasak is the president of the US-based non-profit EcoHealth Alliance, which has been on the hunt for animal viruses, especially bat viruses, and which has a direct connection with China. In fact, it has a direct connection with Wuhan. Also, additionally, it has a direct connection with the Wuhan Virology Institute from where this entire episode of the new coronavirus has erupted. Because his firm, uh, the EcoHealth Alliance, has funded research precisely on bat viruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Dr. Vezak has worked closely with, uh, with Shi Zhengli, a researcher, scientist, uh, uh, in Wuhan, also famously known as the Bat Woman, because she leads work into bat viruses at this institute. That is a brief about Dr. Desac, but we will come back to him and the other players in this uh, misinformation drama uh, towards the end of this story. Now let us move on. After this uh, uh, publication of the Lancet uh, letter, uh, as we said, there was very little open questioning, uh, even though people were trying to. Uh, put out this, you know, uh, in, in, in the, on the internet and in public spaces, 
but they were uh, they were quite violently pushed down by 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 the by the powerful you know government departments and by mainstream media who kept repeating and touting that letter of the lancet you know to anyone who even asked but how come this virus even uh, was created you know what happened in the wuhan lab and they would immediately go after that person and uh, and and uh, you know discredit uh, that person and show this letter saying look here we have 27 scientists saying that it was uh, it was a naturally evolved virus so people said okay if it is show us evidence that it is naturally evolved now uh, a, a mute spectator for a long time in this was the world health organization uh, which as many of us know has now become a weak organization uh, subservient to uh, powerful corporations and billionaires and uh, and to powerful governments so but yet they had a pressure on them you know to act uh, after all they are the who and so the director general of the who set up a committee you know uh, uh, with the purpose of investigating uh, how uh, this virus emerged obviously this committee had to you know uh, go to wuhan uh, because that's where the uh, cases actually started to appear. But guess who they put on this committee? Dr. Dezak, the same person who not only had a, a, a close uh, relationship with the Wuhan Institute, who has funded the Wuhan Institute for precisely doing research on viruses of bats and also to uh, try and genetically modify them and see what the effect will be on humans. This is the kind of disastrous uh, research work that has been funded. Dr. Dezak goes as part of this committee. They all visited uh, the Wuhan lab, uh, had a very courteous cup of tea with uh, the Chinese host, very quickly wrapped up the visit and came back and submitted a report that said, and if I uh, remember the words right, they said it was extremely unlikely, you know, that there was a laboratory leak, you know, that the virus was a result of human work in the lab that it was extremely unlikely and they again uh, uh, you know uh, push forward the same uh, without evidence uh, theory that the, that uh, uh, the virus must have come from the animal host to a human uh, host through some intermediate animal of whom they have no idea now i would like to share here with you uh, a scandalous thing which happened uh, during this so called investigative committee report that the who did not even ask to see the wuhan institute of virology databases containing information on at least 16000 virus samples that it had studied prior to the pandemic i will say that again the who did not even ask to see the database of 16,000 virus samples that the Wuhan Institute had and which probably it has now deleted. And why? Because the WHO report says that Dr. Dezak said he personally vouched for the lab. Would you call this science? Would you call this an open scientific investigation into the source of the virus? But yet, let us move on with the story. Now, in this story which we are describing, uh, it's a classic science misinformation story. Uh, the real uh, reality is something else. But to the media, to the world, the government and the medical bureaucrats and the corporations and mainstream media are all creating this, this false narrative, which is what is called science misinformation, that uh, the lap leak theory is not possible at all, that it naturally evolved, though there is no evidence for it. Following this WHO report, which came out uh, earlier uh, this year, the people, the forces uh, behind this organized uh, orchestration of science uh, misinformation may have felt that, you know, they had won. Uh, they even had the big tech companies, uh, you know, working for them. Uh, companies like, uh, like Twitter and uh, uh, Facebook, etc. were actively going behind anyone who genuinely raised uh, questions about the source of the virus. Uh, they took down all kinds of content arbitrarily and uh, only supported the official uh, position uh, that it was a naturally evolved virus. Yet, all is not lost uh, as far as uh, truth is concerned because uh, thanks to some parts of the media, 
which are still active, which are still investigating, uh, which will not give up. Uh, information began to come out about the truth of uh, Dr. Dazak's involvement with the uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology in, about, about the insidious uh, pattern of this research itself, which uh, tried to actually promote uh, a virus from an animal to come to a human being. Media investigation has revealed now that Dr. Dezak had sent an email prior to the uh, writing of that letter to all his 26 collaborators telling him that uh, his uh, colleagues in China were urging him to write a letter as a show of support and to, and to uh, play down the lab leak theory. Faced with all these facts, Dr. Dezak has acknowledged his involvement. Uh, with the Eco, Eco Health Alliance and with the Eco Health Alliance's relationship with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It is now known that not only him but five other signatories to that letter also worked with him in the Eco Health Alliance. They were his co employees, but they never revealed it. In addition, three other signatories to that Lancet letter were individuals who worked for Britain's Welcome Trust. Again, a trust which has funded the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Wheels within wheels. And there is more. Just earlier this month, the Telegraph of the UK has reported that all except one of the scientists who signed that uh, letter published in the Lancet uh, rejecting the lab leak theory, they all have links either with Chinese researchers or with their colleagues or with their various funders. As for the Lancet, uh, that prestigious publication, it has uh, belatedly uh, been forced now uh, to admit that it was wrong uh, and that it has actually contributed to stifling science uh, rather than to promoting science, uh, which is its uh, motto. A few good things have also emerged from this uh, misinformation campaign. Uh, a few of the signatories to the original letter, uh, they have the courage to admit it. They are now saying that they have sifted new evidence and they find that uh, their position uh, that they had taken then, uh, they do not agree with it anymore. I will give you two examples. Uh, Professor Bernard Roisman, if I am pronouncing it right, a virologist at the University of Chicago has now said that he is convinced a lab leak was to blame for the pandemic's origins. Another of the signatories, uh, Peter Pelis, uh, I hope I am pronouncing that right. Uh, who is a New York City microbiologist, has said that disturbing information has led him to reverse course regarding his belief in the natural origin of the new coronavirus. As for one more person, a key figure in this entire saga, his name is Dr. Anthony uh, Fauci. He is the director of the National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Diseases in uh, the US and uh, the president's advisor uh, during this entire COVID crisis. He continues to remain in that uh, position. Now, what is his connection with all this? Uh, one is that it was his institute uh, under the NIH, which has close relationships with Dr. Dazak and which has funded Dr. Dazak's uh, Eco Health Alliance. Secondly, Dr. Dazak, it has now been revealed in an uh, email, uh, exposed email, that he was in constant touch with Dr. Fauci and uh, requested him to back him up on this evol natural evolution of the virus theory. And uh, Dr. Fauci did so uh, when the investigations were not even uh, started, when they were far from complete, when the evidence were not even sifted. Uh, from the White House itself, he made a statement. Uh, saying that uh, it's all a conspiracy to think that there is any lab leak or that any uh, lab work was going on, uh, on on related to this virus and that it was most probably uh, natural evolution. And uh, once he made that statement, which uh, further gave a lot of strength to this organized uh, science misinformation campaign, uh, it was revealed in an email that Dr. Dazak wrote an email to Dr. Fauci thanking him profusely for uh, for supporting this uh, position uh, uh, you know uh, and about saving the wuhan lab 
I will end with this uh, small thing about Dr. Fauci, two interesting contradictory statements. Jan 31, last year 2020, he clearly says that, uh, that uh, the coronavirus exhibits features that are totally consistent with uh, animal to human uh, natural evolution and do not point to lab manipul manipulation. This year in May 2020, Dr. Fauci apparently has altered his position after all these things have come out in the media and now he has said in an uh, interview to Politi Fact, uh, a journalist, that he was not convinced that COVID-19 developed naturally. This is a classic case of uh, how science misinformation works, uh, how uh, science organized science misinformation works when uh, uh, the players are, you know, powerful uh, players uh, with some uh, vested interest in this game. We don't know exactly why they did it, uh, at whose behest they did it, uh, and what personally they have to gain from it. We can, of course, speculate. Now, does this revelation uh, mean that uh, the virus came out of the lab? Not so. What it means is that our investigations into the cause of the virus has been delayed, postponed, we have lost 18 valuable months because of this campaign of disinformation. Maybe that was their only purpose, delay it so that we can get on with uh, some other things and we'll have time to delete all other evidences in the Wuhan lab, maybe. But for me, uh, the other question is uh, about this gain of function research itself. Should civilized human society even allow such dangerous research to happen? you know, deliberately inviting uh, pandemics like this and, uh, you know, to, to go and tamper and, uh, and, and play with nature at the level of genes without totally understanding the consequences uh, is, is uh, something we have to really think about. Maybe we should uh, discuss that in another small video. Meanwhile, stay healthy, stay happy. Namaskar.